plugins uh, is going to be our goal for today. We've looked at these various screens, what are posts and pages and all of that. We've looked at that. Now one of the big screens that is listed here is plugins. From the left side here you can click on plugins or select installed plugins. I'm just going to click plugins. First of all, a plugin is sort of like a mini app. A mini app or a mini add-on that we add to to your site. I'm going to write notes here as usual. So WordPress uses plugins. Plugins are mini apps to add features to your site. Out of the box, WordPress has a lot of capabilities, but it's missing some things such as backups, good backups. That's the duplicator plugin. It's missing things such as the ability to sell products. We're going to look at a few plugins in this class about selling products. Those are plugins. So I'm going to. Save those notes at the end of the day. And at the moment, we have and at the moment we have the three plugins here. We have uh, something called a Kismet. We have Duplicator, we have Hello Dolly. Mm -hmm. So the default is we have Hello Dolly, which is honestly a completely worthless plugin. It doesn't really do anything. Uh, it does actually tell you like a message when you log in. It gives you a lyric from the song Hello Dolly, but besides that it does nothing else. Now it comes built in to WordPress most likely because the creator of the Hello Dolly plugin is the inventor of WordPress, so obviously that's nepotism. <laughs> so we've got that one plugin. It doesn't really do anything, so we'll deal with it in a moment. The other one that came with it, which is, which is very good, is a Kismet. A Kismet anti-spam. So this helps prevent spam on your site. The purpose of it is that it monitors who is commenting on your site and then automatically takes out uh, the bla the bad comments it, it zaps them. It's if it's spam. So we have the kiss. Well, we'll do hello Dolly. Basic plugin not used. We've got a kismet. This is anti spam. So keeps your site spam free. This, however, needs needs setup. Free account at WordPress.com. So again, we talked about WordPress.com, WordPress.org previously. Uh, .com is the training wheels where you can go create a website for free. You get started quickly, but it's training wheels. It doesn't have all the all of the um, capabilities. What we're doing is we're on WordPress.org, uh, on our local host, basically. So we will see that this needs some setup at WordPress.com. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that in that .com, not .org. Yes, it is .com. So the .com gives us uh, some features that are not active by default on .org, and a Kismet helps us active reactivate that. So. We'll look at that in detail in a moment. That's a Kismet. So popular plugins. A duplicator. We've been using it several times. What would you say is a definition for duplicator? Copy the site. The something is the site. Copy the site. Or back up the site. So that's the big idea for that plugin. Uh, there's Duplicator, there's Duplicator Free, and there's Duplicator Pro. We've been using the free one. In my handout, there's a link at the very end with a 
with an affiliate link to Duplicator Pro. I believe it's about $30 or $35 one-time fee to get Duplicator Pro, which gives you more features. So most people can do all right with the free duplicator, but I see that on sites that are larger, uh, with lots of pictures and content, that Duplicator Pro often works best. So I'll list a few plugins and we'll, we'll, we'll use them. Jetpack. I would call this one uh, the Swiss Army Knife uh, Plugins. It has many um, mini plugins, so to speak, built in. Such as um, uh, SEO setup. It has uh, image caching for speeding up your site. It has login protection, etc. It has a lot of extra features that you can turn on and off. Right now, if anyone goes to your login screen, they can try as many times as possible to break in. Jetpack, we will see, has an option that turns on like a limit. How many times can people try to log in with a wrong password before it locks them out? Jetpack also has a feature to speed up your site regarding your images. So Jetpack has extra features that are not built in that you can get from, again, WordPress.com. So Jetpack needs a setup. Free account from WordPress.com. The funny thing is that technically a Kismet is one of the mini plugins of Jetpack. They don't give you the full Jetpack because that has a lot of extra features. They give you a Kismet to start off with. A Kismet is part of Jetpack. So if you create an account on WordPress.com to use a Kismet, it's the same account to then use the full feature of Jetpack. And for your notes, which we'll look at it a little bit later, Jetpack.com is all about it, the documentation. We'll look at it in a bit. It'll tell you what features do you get, uh, how to use them. And this one is, is, is free as well. There's a paid version. Or I think their, their paid version gives you like automated backups. Right now, the duplicator is manual. I have to remember to log in and create a duplicator backup, and I've got a backup of my site. Jetpack has a paid service. I don't know the price at the moment, but Jetpack has a service that you pay, and it will automatically back up your site. So you don't, if you forget to do it, they will do it for you. While, Victor, while I'm building my web, I can jump from WordPress.org and WordPress.com? No, uh, the only thing you need WordPress.com for is to create the account to activate the plugins. That's it. You don't really use WordPress.com. You just need a login. You need the credentials to verify you can use Jetpack or Akismet. That's it. So, after you do that, so you basically need to have both sites then? No, again, you only you, you need to create an account at WordPress.com, but you don't need to use it. You just need the account login information so that you can use Jetpack on your site on .org. It will come up on .org. Okay. But again, our terminology, I simply say .org. I'm, we're not going to get a site on WordPress.org. We're just going to use the software from .org, and we're installing it on localhost or... GoDaddy and Bluehost and such. So another plugin that is very popular that uh, is going to be very useful for you uh, is called Yoast. Y O A S T. I think it's. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yoast, like toast. Um, SEO plugin. If you take my other classes, such as the search engine optimization class. I talk about that plugin. In that SEO class, it's all about what do I need to do on my site to get traffic? Because we let's say we build a nice looking site in this class, a nice functional site, 
in this class, but no one's going to my site. No one knows I exist. So the concepts of SEO are what you want to engage in in that class, and Yoast plugin is one of the ones that helps you set up your site to get more traffic. To help you get traffic. To optimize your site for the search engines. talk about one more then we'll actually use them. Um, this one is uh, called redirection. Uh, monitors broken links on your site helps you fix them. Broken links are one of the things that are detrimental to your ranking by the search engines. It, you, it hurts you when you've got broken links on your site. If you've got a site and you're not reaching number one, there's all of these things you need to do to, to reach the top of the results. Yoast and many things help you. But redirection is part of that. If I've got broken links, um, maybe I don't even know I have broken links, redirection will monitor that for us and then help us fix it. You can install as many plugins as you want. You can have as many active or not active as you want. So the pro and the con of plugins, pro is new features, extra capabilities. The cons, too many plugins, slow your site. Plugins can, one plugin can conflict with another. On uh, unupdated plugins are security risk. We'll address all of those things in a moment. Uh, I've listed two pros, and there's more, but I've listed two pros and a few more cons. The cons can, can be outweighed, of course, by the pros. Too many plugins slow your site. I see this a lot if my company gets hired to work with with a client that already has a site. One of the first things we do is we check their site. We log in, you know, we set up the contract, we get hired, we go into the site, we do, we do a, an audit, we do an analysis of their site. What does your site have? What plugins does it have? All of these things. And oftentimes one of the main issues that someone has on their site is they've got too many plugins that are not doing anything. You can install as many plugins as you want, but notice here we've only got one that is active. A Kismet and Hello Dolly are not active. This one's active, it's blue. This one says, activate me. It's not active, it's not active. This one is active. Deactivate this one. You can also confirm it if it's not so obvious up here. All plugins installed, three. Active one, inactive two. One needs an update. So just because I see this screen at a, at a glance and I don't pay attention, yeah, these are my plugins. Well, only one is really active and useful. The other ones might not be useful. And even if they're not active, they're still taking up resources. Too many plugins slow your site down because these plugins take up space on the server. They take up some amount of megabytes or kilobytes or something. They take up space on the server. They also take up resources because these Plugins every once in a while there's a new version. Well, every once in a while these plugins check back on the on the WordPress mothership to check is there a new version. I don't know how often, 
I don't know if we can even look that up, but the, every plugin is a little different, and it checks, is there a new version? So even if you're never using this one, it's checking, and it's using your resources to say, to check and to tell you there's a new version. <coughs> and let's say I ignore that. Okay, well, who cares if it keeps wanting an update? I'm going to leave it alone. Well, the problem there is that there's security risks. The reason that there's updates on almost all software is because there are usually security concerns that need to be updated. When your phone every once in a while needs an update, when your computer needs an update, software needs to be updated. My, my Mac needs an update, my Windows <laughs> needs an update, because hackers are trying to break in, because software goes out of date. So there's some security feature most likely that's been updated here. And if I leave it broken, someone could figure that out and break into my site. If you haven't heard by now, there's been a huge global hack that has happened that millions of computers all over the world have been infected. Um, really, really bad. One of the worst ones in recent memory. So recently it was uh, that software, the Windows software, uh, was updated. So if you haven't updated your Windows computer, you really should, because there's a big global panic happening. Yes? Even though it's uh, activated, it would still cause uh, a yeah, even if it's not activated, because the code exists in your site. And if someone can figure out where is the code, where is it broken, and that break into your site. What's the difference between this uh, plugin and C, C panel? Uh, we have a lot of, lot of stuff in there. Is that I, be considered like a C panel with a lot of plugins that you can use? Or? I, I can't quite answer that because C panel isn't exactly WordPress. cPanel is, is, is your Bluehost account or your GoDaddy or whatever, and cPanel lets you control different things. So I can't really give an answer. They're, they're different. Now here, with, with these examples that I've given, um, let's look at a few here. So. Let's say um, let's look at let's look at Yoast first. This is a plugin we don't have. There must be some way to add a new plugin. Let's add a new plugin. <laughs> so on this plugin screen, click Add New, or you can click on the side here, Add New. This connects us to the WordPress uh, marketplace, similar to the um, themes. When we look for themes, we get featured, popular, recommended, and favorites, and search. So if I'm looking at featured, these are plugins that are popular and featured, and, well, look, Jetpack is down there, and a Kismet. But there's some other ones here. Uh, Buddy Press is pretty cool. This is a way. Uh, People sometimes say, well, can I create like a, can I create my own social network? And in the old days, it was very difficult. It was a lot to do to set up your own network. Now with BuddyPress, which is a plugin that you add on top of WordPress, you can create your own social network. You can create this so that only certain people that you want can log in and chat with each other and share photos and all of that. So with BuddyPress. Uh, super cache to speed up your site, etc. So there's some featured plugins. Look at popular plugins. There's a lot that pop up here also, a lot of them. Now it's really ironic, but here's Hello Dolly again. Hello Dolly is very popular. But notice all of these plugins also have ratings. Two and a half star rating. <laughs> Lots of plugins over here in the popular, WooCommerce, Yoast, etc. Recommended, if I click there, it's recommending WordPress, Yoast, Jetpack, WordFence, WordFence, WordFence Security, Updrafts, Backups, Events Calendar. These things are popping up here, and um, favorites, once you've selected a, a favorite, 
Uh, they'll be listed here. And then you've got search. So just for fun, let's say under search, just type Twitter. I want a Twitter plugin. This is going to show you various plugins that have some relation to Twitter. It's custom Twitter feeds. People sometimes say, how can I make it so that my tweets automatically show up on my website? Twitter plugin. I see various plugins. They all purport to do that. Working with Twitter, well, how do I know what's a good one? How do I know what, which one will really work well? This is the part that um, I've listed a few plugins that I recommend, but there's plenty of plugins out there that'll help you do more. So let's take Let's talk. Let's look at this intelligently to figure out what plugin you need for your particular case. Because obviously, I don't know every plugin for everything. But here's my steps that I would do to figure out the right plugin. So, how to pick a plugin? Search a keyword of what you want to do. So, I want Twitter on my site. I want a shopping cart on my site. I want uh, news feed on my site. I want CNN to show up automatically on my site. So I can search the keyword CNN news feed. Or I can search for Twitter, Twitter messages. So I search. Then look at the results <coughs> and their stats to find the right plugin. The stats are, do you notice on all of these there are, on the bottom here, stars and all of that. So look at all of these stats. Uh, we've got star ratings, sort of like Yelp. When people review a, a restaurant or a business, they leave stars. Now, for a while, um, and it still has some of it, but for a while people like uh, didn't quite trust Yelp and such saying, well, they're fake, they bought those reviews, or they told their friends to review them. That is true to some degree, but the more stars that there are, the more ratings that there are, the more real that they are. Uh, Yelp does a good job of filtering out fake reviews. I've seen it. Here, same sort of thing. Even if you want to be pessimistic and say, well, half of them are fake, what's half of 250? 125. Are you going to believe 125 reviews? Okay, what's half of 125? 70 something. Are you going to believe 70 reviews? Yeah. Okay, what's half of 70? 30. Are you going to believe 30 reviews? Yeah. At a certain point, the more reviews that there are, the more of possibility that they're real. Even if you take a quarter of the reviews, that's a good enough reviews. Out of 1,300, half of that are real. Half of a half of a half. I worry when there are... 20 reviews, when there are 8 reviews, what's half of 8? 4 real reviews. What's half of that? 2 real reviews. Well, 8 reviews. I can ask 8 of my friends to give me a good review. Can I ask 50 friends? Can I ask 100 friends? Can I ask 1,000 friends? So look at these and also how many reviews to decide if it's a good amount of reviews. 26 is good. 20 is good good-ish, 40 is good, 4 is not good, 130 is great, 17 is not that great, 8 is not good. So if you want, you know, under double digits, don't even believe it. Over double digits, more than 20, more than 30, start to believe them. Over 100, I believe them. Because, uh, you know, you can't really fake after a certain review, after a certain number. So look at the stats. Star reviews. Try for at least four stars and more than 20 reviews. If it's five stars and 17 reviews, close enough. So you don't have to have these exact values, of course. But if it's five stars with two reviews, well, obviously the author gave themselves five stars and and their mom gave them a five-star review, too. So I wouldn't believe that with two reviews. Nine reviews, I don't quite believe it. Next, and Twitter Connect. Compared to ten reviews here, Twitter Likebox. 
uh, Twitter widget with styling, five reviews. So it's not really in any order, I think. Um, I don't really think even an order of stars. Yeah, I, I don't really know what order. There's a million active over here, but it's lower down. So other things to look at here. Active installs. This one I can't give you, like, make sure it's 200. I can't give you a number here, because based on your plugin, what your, what your feature that you need, there may not be a lot to choose from. Everyone makes a Twitter plugin, so there's lots of options. But not everyone makes a plugin that you need, you know, to show uh, classified information for bike products. I don't know. Someone might have made a plugin, and there's not that many of them, so you don't have a lot to to worry about or to deal with. So more installs shows a better plugin, quote unquote. Just taking a quick browse here at the very top, I see a million there, 200,000, 10,000, 40,000. So if I was going by star ratings blindly, five stars is obviously better than four stars, so I'll pick this one. But this one is 58 reviews compared to three, 398, so that's something to take into account. 10,000 are currently using it, 200,000 are currently using it. So just something to think about. Uh, the active installs is not a deal breaker often, but comparing 6,000 installs with 9,000, just on those two, I might go for Twitter feed. Four stars, four stars, 26 reviews, four reviews. Only 6,000 users, 9,000 users, obviously more are using it, but less have reviewed it for whatever reason. I might go with that one. Another thing you have to pay attention to is last updated. This is the thing about the... Uh, this is the thing about the... Um, the plugins that are broken, unpatched, unfixed. So last updated. Try for three months or newer. If a plugin that you're interested in using says it hasn't been updated in nine months, that's nine months for the hackers to figure out what's wrong with it to break into your site. We're using software from people all over the world here, from designorbital.com from JS Morissette, from Arrow Plugins. I don't know these companies, these businesses. I can click to go check their site and all of that. But anyone can make a plugin all over the world. And being the most paranoid, anyone can make a plugin specifically to hack you and upload it here, and I'll click Install. There are ways to help protect us from that by being intelligent about it. Yes? So, is it better to use a plugin instead of going directly to Twitter? And then the second part to that is if you use a plugin, how often do you need to go back and update that plugin? We're going to have a discussion on updates a little bit later, so we'll come back to that. As for why using a plugin and all of that, I can't answer that quite either because it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to use Twitter from your site, you need a plugin. Right? If you go to the Twitter site, you're on the Twitter site. If you need to use Twitter on your site, you need a plugin. So it depends on your purposes to answer the question the best. Well, so if you uh, go to Twitter, that's, I mean, if you add Twitter to your site, you're not actually there, you're using a link, like an extension cord almost. Well, um, maybe depending on what you're trying to accomplish, we'll talk during the break and such. But uh, the point, like, my idea here is I'm going to add Twitter to my site so that every time that I tweet, the tweet automatically shows up on my site. So in a sense, there is a connection from Twitter back to my site. But that's what I'm trying to accomplish. Depending on what you're trying to accomplish, that answer might be better answered a little one-on-one. -on -one. Yes? I haven't seen your uh, plugin list, but I heard that Visual Composer add-on is a, a good plugin for customization. Do you have any thoughts on that? 
Let me come back to it in a moment. I'll make a note here. Uh, my short answer is that I like it. It's very good, but I don't mention it all the time for various reasons because also there are alternatives to it that are very good, and also depending on your theme, you may or may not need it. So we'll come back to Visual Composer, but overall I give it a thumbs up. So what I'm trying to say here is, um, okay, eight months ago, the Kibo Twitter feed hasn't been updated in eight months. That's eight months that maybe someone has figured out how it's broken and can log into your site. Um, try to go for plugins that have updated more recently. This has been updated one day ago. They're on top of the security features. I'm saying in my notes, three months or newer. You know, this one's four months. It's just past my threshold. I may not completely discount it, but I might say this one might be starting to get past 70,000 installations is a good amount. Four stars is good. 55 reviews is okay. It's getting a little bit old. It's just a star rating. You can't just, just one. Um, the star rating, yeah, that's a good point. Um, I think I've seen it. No, actually, you can see it here. If you click on more details, you will be able to see people's actual reviews. Yes? Since well, once you've installed the plugin, it will be checking automatically for you. This is what I was saying that these are going to check for you. So even if I don't use the plugin, it's checking. Is there a new version? So I don't have to manually anymore check. Is it new? It will check for me. Yes. Ideally, yeah, you want uh, you want regular updates, but sometimes it doesn't happen. And if it takes three months to do an update, it's fine. But if it's taking months and months, eight months, six months, then it might not be the best plugin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, the last thing to check is right here also compatibility. This one says compatible with your version of WordPress. These other ones uh, don't. They haven't been tested with my version. They may not fully work. So it may break. It may break my site. It may cause problems. So compatibility. Uh, I've worked with plugins that uh, say untested, and it works fine. Sometimes you see the options of either, you know, works with your site, untested, and incompatible. Obviously, if it's marked as incompatible with your version of the site, don't use it. If it says untested, you might be okay using it, probably be okay. And compatibility of tested obviously means that it's compatible and it works, compatible with your version. Now the problem about, well, why would I even go with untested? That has to do with what version of WordPress I have. And we have a discussion a little bit later that we'll talk about your WordPress version. We're using the latest one, the one that just came out, 475. So maybe the plugin author has not tested on 475. They tested it on 474 and they haven't tested it on the latest version. So I wouldn't completely discount a plugin if it says untested. I would if it says incompatible, but maybe not untested. Yes? Could you contact this guy and see if I can update before you plug it in? That would be a good idea. You can go, most of these have a link back to their website. So I can go to Vivacity Infotech Limited, 
and then email them and say, hey, I really like your plugin, but it's untested with WordPress 475. Are you going to test it? What what can we know about that? You've been using it for about six months to a year, and all of a sudden it's still not tested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, the most paranoid scenario is that there could be a company that is making malicious plugins. Yeah. But part of the reason, part of the way we guard against that is the community. People that are giving low stars, they got burned by the plugin, so they went in here and gave it a low star. Also, if we look at more details, if on any of these you click more details, you will see reviews. So here's where people are, are giving the reviews for the plugins. It works, but I will be happy if it can you call hashtag. So it doesn't work with hashtags. Updated six months ago. This needs WordPress 3.5 or higher. We have 4.7. It's compatible up to 4.5.8. We're on 4.7.5. So they've tested it up to 4.5 and we're on 4.7. They have 20,000 installs. That's a good amount. And then reading at people's reviews here. So Verzameld says, pity, pity, plugin does not does some nice things, but it's such a pity that it lets you fill in all four for every Twitter feed, etc. So we can read people's notes. We can see how many stars also. So when I searched Twitter at the top right corner, you may have noticed it gave me 4,443 results. So this is why we have this discussion about what's the right plugin. Can further read the description, installation, frequently asked questions, screenshots, change log, meaning what has changed. So in 3.7, they added MailChimp, Ybo. They added yo, which is really funny because yo is a really bad social network. Um, so to to choose the right plugin, you kind of follow those steps in general. Look at the stars, the installs, how updated it go. This was updated six hours ago. Has it been tested on your site? And then you can install it. So in our case. I definitely want us to try out, then we'll take a break. I want to I want to try out Yoast. I saw it under popular. You can search for it. But Yoast, for example. Go back to popular, it's got 12,000 stars, probably five stars, uh, one million installs or more, updated a week ago, untested with our current version, but I'm not so worried. I want to click more details. Um, the team, the author that is Team Yoast, tells you what the plugin is, what it does. They've got a premium version. Premium is the is the code word for not free. So you can pay. <coughs> How much? I don't know. Every plugin is different. Every plugin has different. Criteria, it could be one-time fee, it could be a yearly fee, everyone is different, that's why you read to find out. Um, I think so, they're a very popular plugin, they've been around a long time. So a lot of documentation there. Frequently asked questions, you can go off to their website, what has changed, how does it look. Reviews. Let's take a quick look. Reviews. Let's see if anything is bad. <coughs> Someone gave it zero stars. Anyway, this is a good one. This is the one I recommend. The purpose of this is to help you optimize your site. Let's um, let's click install now. And what happens is it'll connect back to the WordPress.org site. It'll download it, it'll install it, but then we have to activate. We did this a while ago on day two of the class when we set up Duplicator. Duplicator did not come with WordPress. 
We searched duplicator, we clicked install, and now we click activate. So make sure you activate Yoast. <coughs> at the top, I get a brand new item that says Yoast has three notifications. We'll look at that later. And then on the left side, I also get a brand new section, Yoast SEO, that has something there. We'll look at that right after the break. We've just added something new, a new feature to our site to help us optimize our site for, for traffic. This is one of the plugins I highly recommend for, for all of you, for all of our clients. Uh, it helps us optimize the site. We'll see how to use it right after the break. And make sure you've installed it at least. At 7.30, we'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 7.40, and we'll go on. If you need any help at the moment, call me over, and we'll be back at 7.40.